Hello, folks. My name is Hugo Salinas Price. I'm 89 years old. I'm talking to you from my office in Mexico City. I'm a Mexican citizen. I've been unemployed for about uh, the last 33 years, and this has been the most profitable years of my life, being unemployed. Uh, because uh, I left uh, my business, I left my position in uh, family business to my eldest son, and he's done very well. And so, re retiring myself uh, was the best business decision I could have made. So while I've been here unemployed all these years, I had a lot of things to do. Uh, a lot of my energy went into trying to convince the world to adopt silver money in parallel with fake money, because fake money is all the money that the world uses today, fake money. So I was suggesting that we have silver money in parallel. But of course, uh, of course, that is not an acceptable uh, proposition in today's world, and so I have given up that, and I have turned to uh, uh, other things to entertain myself. And among them is uh, examination of the platonic solids. These are the platonic solids. There are five platonic solids. It's a pyramid that has four sides, all of them equal. The octagonal octahedron, which has eight sides, all of them equal. The cube, which has six sides, equal. This figure, which has 12 pentagons, 12 sides. And this figure, which has 20 sides, all of them triangle. And these are the, the only regular solids that there have been in the universe, that there can be in the universe. Now, these were uh, given to us by Plato, but he didn't invent them or come upon them on his own. He probably got them from the Egyptians or perhaps the Pythagoreans. I don't know. But in any case, he was the first one to call the attention of the world to these solids, and they got his name. And then there's another solid which uh, does not qualify as a platonic solid. It's a sphere. But I consider it a, a worthy of being considered alongside the platonic solids because it's all, it's all, uh, all its sides are, are equal. Uh, it either has one side, which is all of the, so the whole sphere itself, or it has an infinite number of sides. So I call the sphere, I give it my own name, but it already is called the sphere. Well, thinking over these, uh, these, th uh, these figures, I've discovered some interesting things about them, which I don't know if other people have uh, remarked on them. Perhaps they have. But uh, anyway, I've discovered all these things on my own, and I'd like to pass on these, uh, what I have found. First, uh, that there is a relationship, that there's a relationship between this pyramid which, as you know, has four sides, all of them equal, and this octagon, which has eight sides, all of them equal. Well, I was looking at them one day, and I said, well, how about putting this one like that? Hey, it just fits just nicely. And here I have some, I have some other, some other, some other of these pyramids.
So, lo and behold, one transforms into the other. If, 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 we, if we chop off the edges of the pyramids, we get the octagon. And if we put the, those, those points that we've chopped off put back on, we get the pyramid once again. So, these two forms have a relation between themselves. I think that's interesting. To, uh, I don't know what it means, but it's interesting that they have a relationship. These are the only figures, the only regular solids that can exist in the whole universe. So what we're seeing here are fundamental elements of the universe. I don't care how far the astronauts go or how far our astronomers go with their, with their telescopes, electronic telescopes. I once uh, visited an electronic telescope. Uh, uh, the astronomer was a friend of mine and he invited me to visit. It was way up on a high mountain and so we went to the mountain to visit his telescope. He was building it. And we had to go up. We were already at about 12,000 feet, or maybe 13,000 feet, and I had to walk up six stories up to the telescope itself. I tell you, I was out of breath. So the, the astronomer said, this is, this is, a, this is a microwave uh, telescope. It's, it, isn't a vi it isn't an optical telescope. And uh, I'm, he had to place these silver-coated uh, sheets in certain positions to form the, refle the reflective surface of the electron uh, telescope. And he had the problem that people came in and stole them during the night. Could you imagine? These things happen in Mexico. Well, anyway, I, f I financed his, his uh, elevator. And I think my name must be on a plaque there. But unfortunately, a few months later, perhaps a year later, he died. And so I don't know what's become of the electronic telescope and what it could have discovered. I think what it would have discovered is more of the same. Because I think that the universe is infinite. It's infinite. And this sphere, I painted it black. Because space is black, or at least that's the way it looks from the pictures that the uh, uh, people out on on the uh, on the uh, out in space, the spacemen take pictures, and they, all of them uh, we see the space is black because the sun is hitting, and so they can't see the stars. You see, they're always in the sun, and so space is infinite and eternal. It's been here since it's, it's outside of time. It will never end. It didn't have a beginning and it has no end. So it's beyond the power of the human mind to imagine it. We can just say it but we can't really uh, visualize it or understand it. We just have to accept that it's incomprehensible. And uh, I attribute the universe to God. God created the universe. Well, but we'll come back to that a little later. Here is the cube. A cube has six sides. The cube has a great religious, a great religious uh, meaning. The Freemasons mention Albert Pike, I have his book, uh, morals and dogma, or dogma and morals, I don't know. Albert Pike, 1871. And he mentions a cube many times in his work. I haven't read his work. I'm not a Freemason. Um, but uh, it's a very interesting uh, society. And they use the cube as the, as the model for their uh, places of reunion, which they call their temples. If I'm not mistaken, they use... 
that the also the temple of Solomon in, Je in Jerusalem before it was destroyed was a cube. So, and another thing about the cube, the Arabs have a cubic temple which is their most sacred temple of all Islam. And all Arabs, all male Arabs are supposed to travel to Mecca if they possibly can, at least once in their lives. And they visit the temple in Mecca, which is forbidden to enter Mecca for anyone who is not a Muslim or prohibited from entering that. And the temple is a cube, or very nearly a cube. It's a black cube. It's called the Kaaba. So the cube has a religious significance. Then we come to the Pentagon. The Pentagon also has a great deal of meaning, especially to Freemasons who have built a building in the form of a pentagon for their ministry or secretary, secretariat or the ministry of war. And this figure has 12 sides. These figures were made for me by a person uh, who works for me and he made them out of uh, my uh, cigar boxes. I'll smoke a lot of cigars and these are all made of the wood of cigar boxes. Did, did a nice job. And here's the last figure. This figure has 20 sides and each one is a triangle as you can see. And that forms the last of the five of the platonic solids. Now a curious thing about these is that if you take any one of these, this one, the pyramid, or the octagon, or the cube, or this one, or this one, you, can, you could have a, a, a sphere around each one of them, and each one of the points would touch the sphere. All of them are the same. They can fit inside of a, sphere, a perfect sphere. That's interesting, because the last one is a sphere. Well, now I want to show you, I've shown you how this one transforms, now I want to show you that this I discovered a couple of years ago. And since I discovered something new, something new, so a new transformation I'd never suspected. First, I got to looking at this figure and I said, well, what, I could prolong these sides and I made this out of paper, I made this out of paper myself. And look how it makes a peak. And you, you could have one peak on each side. So you'd have a very interesting figure with 12 peaks. So I called a an excellent silversmith to make me a figure out of silver to see what, what it would look like. And so, so he did so, and this is what I got. Now isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. This is sterling silver, and it's really, he, the silversmith did a magnificent job because, oh, his name is, here it is, Marmolejo, Mr. Marmolejo. He's, I think he's the finest silversmith in Mexico. He did an excellent job on this beautiful, beautiful geometric object. Sterling silver, beautiful. Well, I've looked at this and then, since I have a lot of time, I, what if I put, what if I cover this with a surface? What happens? Well, we could put a surface between the three points, see? Now if we can put a surface between the three points, we can put a surface between any of the three surfaces. And what would happen? Well, let's see, just a minute. 
So I made this one. It has five surfaces. And you see, it fits quite nicely over the five surfaces. Well, not exactly because uh, I didn't make this with enough precision. But it gives you the idea, you see, of how the, the surfaces. And so, uh, how many of these? This has, this has one, two, three, four, five. And we could put four. So five times four is 20. So if we covered this whole surface, this figure with, with these surfaces, we'd have a, f a figure of 20 sides. Let's, let's see how it's done. How is it done? From here, we go to the next one. Here, thank you. So I'm going to put this inside. And here we put these surfaces on top. And what do you know? This original figure of 12 sides has turned into the figure of 20 sides. Now, isn't that a strange mutation? I don't know if anybody else has ever noticed this. But there it is. Here it is. From, from here, we went to the spikes. And then we put the, cover the spikes again, and we end up with this. Isn't that something? I think that's very mysterious. And I hope it interests you. But I've got more for you. More for you. OK, now we'll remove this. Now, here we have a cardboard figure, which is the same as this one. And it's practically the same. And it has 20 sides. It's the icosahedron. Icosi means 20 in Greek. So I did the same with this figure. I prolonged, I prolonged the, the parallel lines up. The parallel line up. And this line up. And we get this peak. So I said, so I asked my assistant, uh, Octavio, make make something make something with with uh, with peaks so we can show what's going on. I mean, so here it is. Was it the bottom? The bottom part with its peaks, and here all the since it has twenty sides. It has to have other, it has to have 20 peaks. Isn't that something? What a waste of time, huh? <laughs> but well, all science is a waste of time until you get something useful. And it isn't always useful, but it's a lot of fun. So here you see this star with 20 sides. Now it occurred to me, well, now let's cover the 20 sides, like we did with the other figure. With 12 sides, we're going to cover these sides. OK. Let's have the bottom part. Have it. OK. There we have the bottom, the bottom part. And here we have the, bar, the top part. Well, goodness gracious. From, we went from 12 sides to 20 sides. And now we went from 20 sides back to 12 sides. 
Isn't that strange? I mean, it's weird. Well, I hope you appreciate the weirdness of this. Of course, the size doesn't matter, but it's the fact that it that we that from one form we get another form. They're related, and I don't know that anybody had noted this relation between the two platonic solids before. Maybe somebody already did so. Now I want to go back and I want to return to the mysterious subject of Oh, this this fear represents is a representation of the entire infinite eternal universe. It is spherical. At least in our minds we can we can think of it as spherical. And why is this cube? Why did I paint it white? has very special and why and there is a fundamental reason for why it is regarded with religious awe by so many people in this world as I mentioned well and this is simply a a metaphysical speculation on my part I think that The creator of the universe instilled life into the universe through the cube. That's why it has a religious significance. And why through the cube? Every single living thing, now I look this up. I looked this up. Every single living thing that has been examined on Earth, from microbes through whales, every single living thing has always contained salt. And the molecule of salt is a tiny molecule invisible to the eye of sodium chloride. And that element, that little cube, is so small we can't even see it, is the base is a salt, and it is white. And this represents the salt introduced into the universe in the form of sodium chloride. And this is the vehicle which the Lord uses to instill life into the whole universe. So I want to suggest that if any of our astronauts goes to Mars or further, that if they find salt, they will find what could produce life. Not necessarily that they will find life, but that they will find the element that is necessary, indispensable for life. Because if life is indispensable on this earth, this earth is simply a, an infinitesimally small sample of the whole universe. And the whole universe must be similar to the world that we see. Perhaps not in the same stage of development, our world has changed over millions of years, but in the universe there is no time and we have infinite number of worlds in process of formation and we have an infinite number of worlds that have developed far beyond where we are now. But wherever there is life, or wherever there has been life, there has been salt. That holds for the whole universe. So I am, I am predicting 
for our future astronauts what they are going to find and what the meaning is going to be of discovering salt. Well, I think I've taken up your time enough. And with that, I send you my best wishes and thanks for watching. Goodbye.